Hello and welcome back to the X-Files Revisited. We are on to episode 21 of season 4, Zero Sum. Brian, tell us a little bit about the legacy of this episode. Uh, yeah, so it's a Skinner-centric episode um, mm. and it is quite a pivotal one, really, because... A lot of the stuff we we get in here really does feed into the overall kind of the overarching story of, of everything that's going on with regards to Scully's cancer, the uh, the syndicate and what they're up to, and the part mm. of the bees playing it. Uh, and a lot of this is going to come back for the X Files movie in just over one season's time. Uh, so yeah, um, to go. With all this as a Skinner centric episode, um, is maybe a bit of a gamble, I don't know, but uh, whether it pays off or not, uh, we, we'll yeah. get into. But it, it, yeah, it's I, I'd be interested to know where you're going to guess this one sitting in the IMDb 217 ranking because this is, of course, a you know mythology episode. And we we have kind of noted over over the course of doing the show that maybe some mythology episodes get given a, a lot of slack mm. from from X Files diehards. So yeah, so I'd, I'd be interested to know where you think this one ranks. Well, I do think it is a, it's definitely a, a strong mythology episode. Mm. Uh, I think it's got a lot of the smoking man and a lot of the smoking mirrors that go along with him. I think I think the, the X-Files fans are going to put this in the top quarter of, of the rankings. I'm going to go for a 44. <laughs> Double hit. 88. 88? 88, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently uh, fans not so high on the skin man as one would think. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, okay. And I often oh. get this one, or elements of this one, I often get confused with another episode, another Skinner-centric episode that comes later, uh, called S- SR819 or something like that. But, um, yeah, uh, so, yeah, let's get, in, get into it. Um, so, Zero Sum, episode 21 of season four. We start mm. off in a factory... Uh, there's a couple of employees kind of chatting to each other. They're kind of, they're, they're like besties, although you wouldn't tell from, from the way they're talking to each other. <laughs> Comes as a surprise much later on in the episode. It's I'm definitely good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, one of them goes off on a fag break. You get the sense that she does this a lot. She's a bit lazy. Yep. Uh, she nips to the bog. To, to the toilet <laughs> for any American audiences out there who've got no yes. clue what I just talked about. And, so, and uh, cigarette yeah. as well, just in case they're wondering. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Don't even get me started on the uh, <laughs> the, the recent, recent Ryan Googler news for the X-Files. Yeah. Are they going to have the uh, cigarette man return as the vaping man? So, <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> so she goes to to have her little cigarette break in the toilet, and uh, suddenly these bees just erupt from every kind of yeah. crevice and just take over the place and and mm-hmm. and sting her to death. Um, so we get the bee attack. We get the body found by the best the bestie who comes to. Basically, yeah. railroad and say, "Come on, get your ass moving," kind of thing. She she finds the body, uh, and, and that's that's not quite the setup because it's a really long setup to this. But that 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 yeah. is essentially a sequence. So it is. I mean, this is where the intro would be after yeah. this, this moment normally. Um, I I mean, I, I I I was wondering if there's something supernatural here before. Although we have seen like um, an amassing of bugs of some sort before that seem to vanish without a trace. Yeah. But you kind of think, like, if they suddenly... Weird, like, the fact that they've all just vanished mm-hmm. when somebody else walks into the room had me, like, really curious about where this was going. <clears throat> um, 
and I, I never, I didn't immediately jump to um, the previous B situation that we've seen in other mm. episodes before because of the vanishing act that they had. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, this was kind of curious up to here before it moves into another segment, which was even more curious. Mm. Yeah. Uh, which is Skinner in Mulder's mm. office deleting files about this case. So some, somebody, this Detective Thomas, has got in touch with Mulder about this death, uh, this bee sting death, and basically Skinner's gone in there, wiped the emails, mm. and, yeah, like, what's he up to? Um, so that's when the, that's when the opening credits kind of... Yes, that that's the, the, pulls the rug from under your feet because this is mm. a man who kind of known... Um, he's up to no good and it, and it leads to all kinds of things like how long has he been doing this is this the first time uh, what's going on it's just so many questions so yeah. i feel it's good at really opening up that episode of, of wow this is different yeah because because it's quite intriguing as it is mm. uh you know it's a pretty gnarly attack by the bees it's like oh mm. that's that's proper x file stuff but then we go into oh this this isn't just a case this is personal this is going to get personal because this is Skinner here destroying this evidence. So, okay. Very intriguing. Um, so we come past the credits and then we get a, for, t for television, a very long sequence without dialogue. Um, it's like, it's literally about eight minutes long, uh, which again, like I said, for a 40, 42 minute episode, that's nearly a quarter of your running time. Um, so, and and it's it all revolves around Skinner packing a bag, going to the scene of the incident, cleaning up all the evidence, any traces, spotting some honey in the corner, which he doesn't quite doesn't really go into too much at this point. Um, he takes a trip to the morgue, steals the body, nearly gets caught by this security yep. guard. Uh, and then he takes the body to this factory where he makes use of the incinerator and yet again destroys the evidence. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's like pretty much like has Skinner going to the dark side. What's going on here? Um, he definitely knows what he's doing. <laughs> like it yeah. doesn't like, <laughs> like the first time, almost, <clears throat> um, but it, it apparently is. But yeah, and, and I think one of the sequences later on, um, he's like actually got a layer of sweat on him, you know. Yeah. Like it, feels, it feels like it's taking the toll off mm. the man, um, which I kind of liked as well. Yeah, mm. he's he's really getting getting his hands dirty, so to speak. Um, so he carries on. He's not finished yet. He goes to the evidence lockup and he checks out some evidence on on this case. Uh, in Mulder's name, so he pretends to be Agent Mulder, checks out this evidence, and while the, the evidence clerk isn't looking, he quickly swaps a blood vial. Um, and, yeah, so so this whole thing, um, y you could say that, that, like, for me, I don't know about you, but for, for me, I, I started to get a little bit, kind of switch offy, a bit bored, just with because it gets very repetitive. Skinner's going around, he's cleaning up this evidence, cleaning up that evidence, cleaning up this evidence. Okay, we, we get the picture, he's, he's hiding this. Mm. But each one of these things does come into play. Like, you, you could say, we, we didn't need to see him doing all of this, but actually, each of the moments kind of comes into play in some way. So, yeah. obviously, going, going, seeing him clean the evidence up at the, in the bathroom stall is where he he sees the honey so that's going to come back later when he when he decides he's he's, he's not yeah. just going to play ball he's going to dig deep uh, and then this sequence where he swaps the evidence um not only is it going to come into play later because Mulder is going to do his due diligence uh mm. but also it it brings him into contact with this detective which you know who is going to get murdered basically so uh, cuz cuz there's, so, there's a lot of time spent in that bathroom cleaning the floor like yes yes yeah I do feel like the, I do feel like this eight minute sequence could have been maybe a five minute sequence. Like mm. we didn't we didn't need to see the security guard or the night watchman, whatever, kind of coming in. That's literally there to build some tension. Oh, is he going to get caught? 
uh, like we didn't need to see that. We didn't need to see how many times he hoovered bits of floor and stuff. We got that. We got the point. Um, so I do think it could have been trimmed down, which which does suggest that th there is some fact on this episode. It's not quite as lean as it could be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah. So when he's leaving the evidence store place, uh, Detective Thomas stops him, asks him if he's found something, and then Mulder i.e. Skinner, says no, he's found no no evidence at all to to warrant investigation. <laughs> all the and while being watched by our favourite goon that you can never remember, but I always say, hey, that's that same goon again. <laughs> well, it's going to surprise you to know that I didn't realise that was the same guy yet again, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not? Seriously? <laughs> oh, man. So this is the same dude, the same dude who was in the last Skinner-centric episode where his face was kind of imprinted on the airbag um, and was also in Memento Mori where he's shooting the, the gun at Mulder and it's going into the bulletproof yeah. glass and he's changing the cartridge. Yeah, same goon, same goon. Uh, um, I think I'm going to nickname him Mr. Beige. Um, <laughs> Mr. Beige, yeah. Beige goon. Yeah. Um, what, I, what I like about this... The sequence when the detective comes up to Skinner is through everything, he's so calm, he's so collected, he knows exactly what he's doing, and he becomes instant Mr. Suspicious as soon as this guy starts <laughs> talking to him. He's twitchy, he's nervous, he's struggling to get out with sentences. It's just it's kind of funny. It throws him for a loop, doesn't it? It really does, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell it's not really in his uh, in his blood to do this kind of stuff. But... No. Okay, so Skinner strips to his tighty whities. He's back home. Strips to his tighty whities because we need the obligatory uh, <laughs> half naked Skinner shot for all those yeah. Skinner fans out there. Uh, he bags up his clothes like he's going to take them out for, for the trash. Uh, and he's about, he's about to take him out to the trash when Mulder calls round to tell him someone is cleaning up evidence. He tells Skinner that Detective Thomas... Well, he's Thomas... holding the bag of rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. That is smoking gun. Behind his back. Like just... <laughs> Are they? <laughs> Are they? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> So he tells him that Detective Thomas was shot in the head. Yep. Uh, he wants Skinner's help. When Skinner asks where Scully is, Mulder says she's gone in for some tests because her cancer might be metastasizing. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, Mulder's, Mulder's on his way out. He's like, you want me to take this down for you? He's like, no, I'll leave it. I'll, I'll sort it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So... Mm. Um, which does bring me to the question, a question I always have to ask during these situations. It's yes, a scully missed. free episode. <laughs> yes, incredibly missed. I, I, incredibly I, I was missed. working the zips along. Right. I just, I just miss her. Yeah, I just miss her. Yeah, it's like, and it's such a like throw away. Like you know, she's she's getting some tests done, and like every time they they, they bump into each other, nobody's like, "Have you heard anything?" <laughs> She'll be back the next episode. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Skinner goes for a meeting with Cancer Man in the parking lot. A beige goon sits in the car, and Skinner's angry at the killing of Detective Thomas. He kind of yeah. grabs hold of Cancer Man. He's all in his face and stuff. But Cancer Man gives his usual. Dry and veiled threats. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's good though that, that to see that Skinner has the line. Okay, mm, the line's it, yeah, as bad yeah. as murder. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lot to get there as well, uh -huh. but he's still got that going for him. You know, it's that that's unacceptable to him. Mm, yeah, it's kind of saving grace for the character at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Skinner's asleep in his chair, didn't even bother to go to bed. Yep. The phone rings and it's Mulder. Mulder tells him that the body was taken as well as the blood being swapped, which is a real surprise to Skinner. How would anybody know this? 
Um, it turns out oh. Mulder had done his due diligence, found out that the victim uh, that has now vanished had anemia. So the blood that is in the uh, the vial isn't anemic blood. It isn't blood from, from someone with anemia. It doesn't match someone with that condition. So mm. he also tells him that the gun used to kill Detective Thomas was the same make that just happens to be Skinner's gun. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, Skinner is now bricking it. He's now <laughs> looking like he's uh, the fall guy. And given what we saw in Musings of a Cigarette Smoking Man, in which Cancer Man is very skilled at, <laughs> supposedly, <laughs> supposedly very adept at creating patsies, it looks like Skinner is, is on his way to becoming one. Um, yeah. And and you've got like you feel you feel it's a trap that he shouldn't have fallen into. Mm. You know, but by by agreeing to do this, he's already like set himself up, and then like they're following him, and you uh, feeling they could be taking pictures, getting other evidence, basically digging him deeper into that hole. Yeah, yeah. I I I do like. It has a feel, this, of, like, your 70s political thrillers. Um, I, you know, you think, like, Robert Redford kind of stuff. Uh, I, I just... I like those kind of movies where somebody... They, they dig themselves a little hole. And it's, it's something that you feel that perhaps they could get out of, but then they... That, that leads them down a deeper hole and a deep, and then they got to cover up those lies and then they got to make more lies to cover up those lies and it always gets me super tense because I'm always like how are they going to get out of this yeah um, and a lot of the time you, you you shouldn't be wanting them to get out because they've they've broken the law um, <laughs> but you can't help but identify with whoever is at the center of whatever that conspiracy is um, obviously we like Skinner we know him a lot more than just this episode so so we do have that attachment but the, yeah. I, I do think this episode does do a good job of compounding things to such a degree where all, for, like certainly from this point onwards, you're constantly asking yourself, how the hell is Skinner going to get out of this? Yep. How is he going to dig his way out of this hole? Um, so <clears throat> Skinner calls Cancer Man. He mm. wants to know what he's covered up. A bit late, Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking now? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he wants to know what's been covered up. He wants to know that Scully is going to be cured and Cancerman says she stands to live a long and healthy life. Um, so it's at this point that we realise this is why he's doing it. Um, basically, he's, he's doing all this. He's jumping through these hoops to get a cure for Scully. So... Yeah, which kind of puts us back on his side a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but so Skinner goes back to the factory. He's decided he's he's not just going to take this line down. He's he's going to start doing some of his own investigative work. Yes. So he goes back to the factory where the the attack happened, uh, and he hammers through the wall where the uh, the little bit of honey was dripping from the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just like I don't understand it. You don't? No. Look, where have the bees gone? Well, they're weaponized. They're weaponized right. bees, so so they're, they've been essentially programmed to do what they did and then disappear, I guess. Just go, I don't know, fly <laughs> back home or... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, but... Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's just weird. Like, I, I like the idea of the honeycomb behind the wall. It's all kind of mm. like such a, a freaky idea that that's just there. But just the, the whole disappearance of the the, the bees kind of just... I, I don't feel as if I understand the rules of, of these yeah, bees. Yeah, yeah. I, I get you. I, 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 I definitely agree with that. I do think... Because, um, well, I suppose there's a moment later on where the um, smoking man refers to the bees being cleaned up at the, the guy's house. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's, all, it's, it's yeah. almost a throwaway line, though, isn't it? And it's like, yeah. and if and if <laughs> thing is, have they done the same thing at the the factory? 
Like, um, I, I guess the question needs to be, where the hell are those bees? <laughs> it's like, if, well, like, I, th I if, think those bees. I think those bees are the bees in the park later on. You think? Well, where, no. where did they come from? No, it can't be, because because they came from some packages, didn't they? That were in that. That so the, there were several packages, and I'm assuming one of those packages got open, and yeah. those bees decided, oh, let's let's nest up here. Um, and yeah, it's not very. No, it's not. It's, it's not, not very clear. clear. Yeah. It's not yeah. clear if this woman's murder was part of the plan or just a cock up on somebody's part. The the pack the package they were in open got opened. They decided to build a nest in the wall, and it's it's all very like right. So yeah. how why? Um, yeah, it's very unclear. Very unclear. Um, he put them there. <laughs> okay, so Skinner takes a piece of the honeycomb um, to an off-the-books investigator to find out what bee made it. The guy asks if it's related to the case that Agent Mulder was investigating uh, six months prior, which really... Uh, see, th this surprises me. Because um, this... this kind of sparks oh hang on <laughs> this sparks up a um interest from skinner as if he didn't know about this yeah but Mulder and scully would have had to have handed their f files in to yeah. him so not only would they have had to hand their files in i'm pretty sure that skinner keeps an eye on them as well, like <laughs> maybe other agents, you know, like just uh -huh. because of the stuff they're up to. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm um, sure but, he, but he would have he would have had to have signed off on it because Mulder would have had he'd have had to write up the report, which obviously he did, and it had those photos in with the the clones and and the stuff about bee husbandry, and he'd have had to read it. Go okay, we can't, this obviously is an unsolved case. We're going on further, and then he'd have had to have signed off on it as his job as assistant director, and then Mulder would file it away. So it's just, yeah, with this bee attack, it's hard to imagine that. But, you know, like that many cases that he probably signs off on every day, and, and it's Mulder, so yeah. who knows who Mulder. It's probably the 20th case involving bees, but <laughs> it's just... I, I, yeah. I did love that this expert was just working out his house. I just thought yeah. that. Just, <laughs> normally you go to like a cool lab or something, and this guy's just, yeah, like, yeah come on up to the attic. It's cool up there. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Um, and he's like, he's kind of, he's kind of snarky, not in an overly the top way. Mm. You know, like, um, if it helps, these bees are are venomous or something. He says, and, and the guy's like, yeah, all bees are. And <laughs> 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 I, I like that. So it's it's the kind of snark you get when you've been on your own in a house full of bees for yes. it's like it's like another twenty years time this guy's Buffalo Bill. Yeah. <laughs> he puts lotion on his skin. <laughs> so Skinner raids Mulder's files on the bee husbandry cloning case from the episode Heron Volk, where he comes across the details of one Marita Covarubius. Uh, secretary to the, the United Nations Secretary General or whatever her position is. So Mulder catches him in the act of jotting down Marita's number, but Skinner pretends he was writing a note for Mulder to mm. ask how he was getting on. Mulder has a very blurry photo of Skinner talking to Thomas moments before he was shot. Um, and yep. you just... I, oh. I did... It's coming. It's, no, save it, save it. Not, not yet, not yet. It's coming, it's coming. I know what you're saying. I wrote it down here, just one word in very big letters, capitals, because I knew you'd want to say it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> let's wait till we get there, Graham. <laughs> um, 
So Skinner calls Marita to ask about the B project that Mulder was investigating. She tells him no evidence was found. Skinner tells her he may have some very soon. Dun, dun, dun. It's yeah, like, and, and, and the chances of phone Amlick. I know her. Who is that? <laughs> oh, come is, on. Is that the X? Is that the new X? Could be. Again. <laughs> Blimey. How are, you, how are you still alive? <laughs> I think you need to get your memory seen too, seriously. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I wouldn't trust her, personally. Like, he doesn't know this woman, um, and he's he's already given up, like... Everything? <laughs> yeah, well, everything, yeah. So like, you don't know why she was looking for evidence. You don't know if she was the one who... Who has been like scuppering Mulder's investigations? Uh, it's the first time you, you've heard of this woman, apparently. So yeah, it, it just yeah. Okay. So the bee specialist mm. is attacked by bees. Can, can uh, I just say, like, he walks in the room and the light doesn't work. <laughs> which like, by the by, but there's a wonderful shot after that showing the light fixture that's on with the bees all around it kind of blocking out the light it's, yeah it's, it's, it's a wonderful shot from like a horror you know that in you know, aspect it just yeah, yeah. like yeah. oh <laughs> and <laughs> we know as soon as he hits the light and nothing comes on that he's dead but it's yeah. just nice to get that visual <laughs> after it before it happens yeah although to be perfectly honest when he puts the it tries to put the light on it doesn't come on I wasn't necessarily expecting the bees. I was expecting Beige Man to be there, <laughs> kind of cleaning up the evidence and do away with him. Like, but yeah, yeah. Okay, he kind of walks so... over to the, the little place where he was gestating it, and he's like, Ooh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> "Okay." So Mulder brings Skinner down to the morgue, you know, for a party mm. to look at the body, which exhibits symptoms of smallpox. Mm-hmm. Mulder thinks the bees are being engineered as a delivery system for a virus that ha- that has killed more people in history than any other. He says they're close to getting a match from the photo, which makes Skinner sweat, obviously. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, smallpox. Yeah. This so, is... uh, I, if you remember the whole inoculations thing smallpox inoculations so there's that that tie there to Mm -hmm. smallpox inoculations so okay um i say that like it actually means something by the time we get to season seven and eight this is all just gonna go (laughs) pants up seriously it's like try yeah but later seasons you try and figure out the mythology of the x-files uh it's 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 not quite twin peaks level but it's (laughs) <laughs> okay so skinner goes to see jane's friend miss uh, misty i think her name was misty that's what, that's what i call anyway i'm gonna call her misty anyway so um back at the factory misty's scared to talk but tells him that men came for a damaged package yeah. told her she'd lose her job if anybody found out about it she says they can find out where it went by looking up the tracking number. So, so that obviously the package that is on its way to this school, um, not necessarily the school so much as somewhere in that area. Mm-hmm. It, like it might not have been sent to the school; it could have been sent to a home nearby or, or whatever. Either way, the package has gone to that area somewhere um i'm still trying to figure out the uh <laughs> how the bees got in that, that that room obviously some got out there was a bee attack which so drew she she mentions that there's um there's an area for packages that have been partial opened or damaged or something so yeah, yeah. that it's came from there and to yeah. it but i mean i think the most surprising piece of information in this whole scene is that she was friends with the woman that died at the start because, 
I did not get that at all. The, it was complete antagonistic no. relationship. Yeah, yeah, big time. It just yeah. when she was like going for a fag break, and it, it's already been like... one fifteen minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm going again. <laughs> you just get the feeling she's the one who's always put upon, always having yeah. to do more work because this lazy woman ain't like it's <laughs> pulling yeah. away. Uh, so yeah. But apparently they were best friends who were going to go on holiday together and buy new bikinis. Like, why are you dropping this information? <laughs> why are you telling this FBI agent that you even shopped for new bikinis and lo- tried to lo- lose weight so you could get into them? But, like, this is information that is not needed at mm. all. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. Still quite unclear as to the whole B situation, but whatever. Broken packages, some got out. They weren't meant to build a nest there overnight and then attack someone. Uh, but when they did, the government came, cleaned them up, made sure the package was found and mm. carried on sending it on its way to where it should be. Um, it's about as good of an explanation as you're going to get, I'm afraid. So... We go from there to rent a pendrel helps pull up a picture of Skinner on the computer. Yes. Say it with me, Graham. Enhance. Enhance. <laughs> now, I'm looking at this thing and going, there is nothing to enhance there. <laughs> that is horrendous. And it's like, even as they start to put the filters over it, you still can't see anything and it's that revelatory look that Mulder has as if to go like oh my god <laughs> that the killing was a pixel it's <laughs> yeah I just oh man. it's it's yeah. I mean I love it but it makes no sense whenever they do it I've never seen a piece of technology that can do that <laughs> yeah. it's like why why are there any blurry photos yeah. <laughs> anywhere it's like <laughs> Like if you can thing. do that, the, the big foot footage. Why hasn't somebody cleaned <laughs> up and checked? Yeah. yeah, why? Why hasn't Mulder gone in with that? Going enhance, enhance, <laughs> enhance. Because <laughs> they, they right. even say like it was shot in crappy VHS tape. Mm, yeah, it yeah. was if it was shot in any like wasn't shot in like seventy millimeter Panavision cameras from the, the bank. <laughs> Okay, Cancerman speaks to the syndicate to tell them everything has been taken care of, which is about as trustworthy as Elton John's hair. It's just like just, they clear the, the syndicate clearly don't seem to trust him at all. Um, they ask. Well, it's nice to see them back though, because yes, it's yes. like bickering old ladies almost. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you think it'd be like a well-oiled machine, but they're mm-hmm. anything but. Yeah. No. So they ask if the trial run is proceeding as planned, to which Cancerman says it has already begun. Um, cut to <laughs> a brutal sequence mm. of children being attacked by bees. Um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. Do, do you know what? It feels, it feels almost like the end of the episode. You know, it's, it's been dealt with everything. So, boom and then somebody just went let's kill kids <laughs> just do it <laughs> come on yeah it's like it's so unnecessary <laughs> yeah it really is <laughs> i mean technically like the, the episode should have started with this mm. attack yes and then and then Mulder, uh, skinner kind of cleaning up this evidence but instead they've got they got this weird thing happening at the beginning because somebody cocked up somewhere. And yeah, but it's not only do we see these kids getting attacked and there's multiple that get stung, but they confound it with the next uh, scene we were in the hospital where the dog <laughs> just won't care or listen. Uh-huh, yeah. So that's just like, I, I, smallpox. Smallpox, the guy's just like... <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> it's like, you're an FBI agent? I'm a doctor. Now get out of my face. Yeah. Um, so it's a. It feels like the, 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 they cop out uh, during the, the bee attack because the kids manage to get into the school and it's the teacher who gets kind of really attacked by it. 
But then we cut to the hospital and we literally see a dead kid on the bed with the parent kind of crying and the, the cover going over it. And we're like, oh, right, okay, the kid's died. <laughs> oh, really? So, yeah. So, dead kids I mean, in the, the hospital. Is, it's the blasey nature of the doctor. Yeah. It's just yeah, because it's smallpox and the guy's just like, oh, I've got a three o'clock tea off time at the golf course. <laughs> I've got to go. <laughs> Soon, okay. Sooner these little buggers die, the better. <laughs> And I kept, I went on, like in my mind, I go in weird places and I'm watching this and I'm just like, this guy is going to realise that once everybody's dead, that it was smallpox. He refused to listen. He's going to go in a downward spiral. He's never tra- going to do medicine again. He's probably going to end up in the streets of Bangkok selling himself. It's like, <laughs> I'm just... it, it no. never <laughs> Like you don't know if these people are saved. No, no, no. They just, they just ignored the whole smallpox thing and... Uh... That's it. A load of dead kids from smallpox. Um, so, yeah, he's not buying it. Off he goes to his golf game. Uh, Marita shows up, says she did some digging and is now trying to track down the missing packages. Skinner thinks the packages may have been carrying the bees. She asks if he's involved, to which he suddenly clams up. Like, is it really that hard to just go, no, no, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> Well, what would make you say that? Like, why? Why is it people in TV shows when when they when they have something to cover up, they always go. No, no, no. <laughs> it's like you so do. <laughs> so Skinner goes home, sees his drawer has been forced open. Mulder is waiting for him. Accuses him. Skinner says he didn't take his own his own advice, um, and then Mulder asks for his gun. Yeah. So yeah, <clears throat> so you're in trouble now. Yeah. Appar- apparently not so much because Mulder's just gonna blow over it. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of felt that was gonna happen as well. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, then jump straight to a ballistics test, don't we? Just yeah. after the sequence, that just. Yeah. Which was cool. It's interesting seeing how they do it with the yeah. little device that they pull and it pulls the trigger without kind of removing the fingerprints and stuff. Mm. So, yeah, so we see the forensics test. Skinner's gun is the gun, it turns out. Um, is there a moment these... where you thought it wasn't going to be? There was a little bit, actually. Yeah. Because I thought, because given Cancerman's MO, it feels like this is the kind of crazy stuff he'd do just to mess with him. Yeah, yeah, just I'm, I'm going to mess with you, make you run about, thinking that I'm setting you up as a patsy. Um, and it's, but, uh, it's like they, they ask the guy, they're like, is, "Is this the gun that could have committed this?" And the guy's like, "Absolutely, no doubt at all. This was one hundred percent gun." Yeah. So unfortunately. Somebody, and by somebody, obviously Mulder, has filed the serial number off the gun so they can't trace it. But one does have to ask. Mm. At some point, <laughs> Skinner is going to be asked to, to bring his gun in. For yeah. you know, An agent surely will bring their gun in at some point uh you know the uh, he's, he's, he's gonna have to tell someone that his gun's missing he can't just go out and buy a new one because his gun has his, his serial number is is matched in fbi files so if he goes off now and just gets another gun it's like um well i mean technically he cleaned a crime scene got rid of a body <laughs> things. I'm pretty sure you can figure out a way of getting another gun. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with that one. So, Cancerman comes home and Skinner is waiting for him. The phone goes off while, while the two of them are talking. Uh, Skinner threatens to shoot Cancerman. Cancerman yeah. says he's the only one who can, can save Scully. Skinner pulls the trigger... And then the camera slowly pans around as he walks out the room to show that Cancerman is dead with a bullet in his... No, of course not. As if we thought that was going to happen. There's bullet holes in the wall and Cancerman is stood there looking like he's just filled his pants. 
Um, and then he goes over, answers the phone to Marita Kovarubius, who tells her, he, he tells her to tell Mulder what he wants to hear. Yeah. So what do you think he's gonna, she's going to tell him? That's the question. Because Mulder wants to hear the truth. <laughs> yeah. He, he doesn't, he, he thinks he wants the truth. He just wants to know that there's a clandestine group out there doing all kinds of nefarious things. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, anything like that at all, he's buying it. Mm. But so I, I also think as well that Cancer Man at this point, it, given what's happened in this investigation, that even Mulder is complicit in covering up, covering up evidence. He's gotten rid of that the serial number on the gun. Um, he knows that Mulder can't take this any further because it would incriminate both him and Skinner and mm. risk Scully's life. So I almost feel like Marita could say to Mulder, yeah, this was a plot by a clandestine, clandestine government to set out some bees that have been genetically engineered to carry smallpox. But you can't do jack about it because... You've no evidence; it's all been destroyed, and you were complicit in the destruction of that evidence. So, um, yeah, it's 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 just interesting. Is it is interesting to to not see that conversation, to not hear it, to not know what was told hmm. Mulder? So, yeah, yeah. pretty sure it's lies anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, fact, the fact that she's uh, clearly working. With Cancer Man at this point uh, shows that nothing she says can be then, trusted. So was it X, wasn't he? Yeah, but I don't mm. think X could be trusted either. He was a, he was his own man. He told Mulder stuff when it suited him, mm. when it benefited him. Mm. Um, so I, I like I, I was I was never on X's side the way I was with Deep Throat. Like I, I felt like Deep Throat was somebody caught in a conspiracy that he didn't want to be caught up in and he wanted Malta to find the truth, but he couldn't just hand it to him on a plate. Yeah. Whereas X to me always felt like someone who was caught up in that conspiracy but was maybe a second stringer, not a not a first not a top player like Deep Throat. And yeah. was trying to kind of work his way up maybe or just have his own agenda. But I never felt like he was truly Mulder's friend. Uh, nope. Marita, when we first met her, felt like she could go either way, but yeah, yeah. at this point. Um, I, I kind of liked Zero Sum. Um, mm. It was a fun enough episode. Now, although there's no Scully in it throughout the, the, the runtime of watching it, other than the time she's mentioned, I, I don't really miss her while watching it. You know, she doesn't seem to be part of this story, and that's fine. Um, it's more of a Skinner story anyway. It's not a case of Mulder investigating something. I, I just, I can't go over the bees. I, I can't understand what, what's going on. <coughs> yeah. Um, just like a little, little humming in my head about that one. Like it just, it just nagging won't go away. I keep wondering if there's going to be a sting in the tail. Um, oh. I, just, uh, I know. Yeah, I should behave. Uh, so so what, what we know is that they are genetically engineered. Yes. They are controllable. So they've been... And, and they carry... They are a carrier for mm. a virus. At, at this point, the smallpox virus. Mm. Um, so And this was a test run. It's not the end of the project. It's, it's yeah. part of the project. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but there, there's some sequences I love. Like, I love the, the silent sequence of... Of Skinner getting rid of the information. I, I love the unnecessary um, kids getting attacked sequence. It's just, <laughs> it's just fun. Um, I, I love certain segments of this. I don't think it's a great episode, but it's, it's one I would happily watch again. Mm. Um, and I, I think I'm going to go for a, a generous four out of five. Yeah, I, I, I went with a four. If, <clears throat> if they lost a bit of the cleaning 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 up yeah. and put some stuff in there that helped us understand 
in greater detail or any detail mm. what was going on with this package and uh, what was going on with the bees in that bathroom stall. If that was clear in my head, this this would probably be a five. Mm. Um, but it's not. It, it is a four, uh, and that is just because of how enjoyable it, it is. It's got, like, really kind of, you know, for, for, particularly for me and you, fan service moments like Enhance and all that. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Cancer Man and, and all them lot. I, I just love his veiled threats all the time. The syndicate's back. It just, yeah, it's... I think this is a case, actually, where perhaps this does get a bit of leeway because it's a mythology episode. Um, but uh, it's it's fun. It, it, it kind of breezes along quite nicely and you just have to let go of some of the uh, <laughs> plot holes, shall we say, uh, in order to bump it up to that four, but yeah. Yeah, but we're willing to do it. So we're we looking at about um, episode 22, Elegy. Um, I remember this one being quite creepy. Uh, it takes place. So the, I know there's visions involved of people with the throat slit. Right. And I remember, I remember those visions being pretty creepy and raising the hairs on the back of my neck when I watched it way back when. Um, and does it take place in like a mental home or something? Yeah, I I'm hazy on it. I'd, there is stuff that I remember specifically, but to tell you what that is would give away the ending. So, right, okay. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. But it's uh, yeah, it's. And is that it, a decent, it, decent episode from your memory? I think it is. From my memory, it's pretty decent. Um, like it's not top tier X Files or anything, but it's one that's it, it's one that stuck with me. There's imagery in it that that always stuck with me. Um, so yeah, excellent. Well, make sure and join us next week when we cover Elegy. And we're getting very close to the end of the season as well, so it's time to start building up those top five uh, best episodes of season four and the worst episodes of season four as well. Looking forward to that discussion. So join us next week for Elegy, which should be fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.